thanks for coming to my presentation. Um, the title of my presentation is a discourse analysis of sustainable luxury reporting. This is a work of four people. Uh, I just completed my PhD in um, Applied Linguistics and Corporate Communication in the Department of English of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Um, I don't have a business background. I'm a social semiotician, linguist, linguist by training. But my three co-authors, they are from the UK, different universities. One of them we met uh, in this conference two years ago and we decided to work together on this paper. This is the outline for today's presentation. So I'll give you a brief introduction, research background, and then I will dig into the methodology that we are applying. First of all, uh, research background for this project. We looked at what is sustainability. And we found out that there is a lack of consistency in the definitions that are given in the literature review. Sometimes it gets mixed up with uh, what is corporate social responsibility. There are some references to reporting practices, but there are no clear directions. So for, um, as research background for our paper, we decided to consider the definition given by the United Nations in uh, 1987. So sustainability is uh, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And then we thought, okay, but what does it mean in practice? In practice uh, means limiting the true output of resources as we focus on the environmental issues for this project and making the best use of resources which are available, as cited by Gordon et al. in 2010. Uh, we also looked at a literature review that was looking at sustainability as encouraging a po positive behaviors, so reuse, buy less, by green, by fair trade. And then we also found that there is a kind of mainstreaming sustainability uh, literature review and also some papers talking about sustainability practices and defining them, also trying to assess them. So increasingly in line with investor expectations and CSR reporting norms, sustainability research focuses on low involvement and also habitual shopping. Then we try to consider sustainability within the luxury industry and also looking at the fact that those two terms have been considered incompatible for a long time and maybe they still are. So we looked at the definition of luxury and definition of sustainability and the reporting practices and we realized that there is this kind of dichotomy and we are wondering in our paper whether there is actually a way, a meeting point, in which we can find luxury sustainable. Because there are some common uh, and commonalities, like for example, they both promote longevity, they focus on long-term practices and preservation, and after 2012, when uh, PPR transformed its brand and become caring, because they care about the world, they defined luxury as sustainable by default. And we also use the paper that I worked on in 2016, where I actually I look at how caring has defined luxury as sustainable and created this new category. Then we focus on reporting because our main uh, focus and aim for the study is looking at communication practices to define sustainability and sustainability practices. So what we looked at what sustainability reporting is and involves measuring, but can we actually measure how sustainable we are disclosing and being accountable to internal and external stakeholders, because if in the past shareholders were interested in sustainable, sustainable practices, now especially after digital transformation, where websites like Caring, for instance, they have become a kind of repository for documents that are shared with the stakeholders as well, and um, conscious consumers are able to scrutinize <coughs> those, those documents. So here comes like whether those uh, notorious millennials, do they really care about sustainability? Do they really go and read those reports to see how sustainable brands are? So we found that in uh, sustainability reporting practices across sectors, not only in uh, luxury, since there are not clear directions, we found that sustainability reporting is a little bit inconsistent and there are different styles. 
looking at an extent research <coughs> of other uh, industry, we found that in tourism there is a lot about uh, sustainable tourism, in a retail, uh, even there are reports, professional reports, and I've been talking with uh, companies that actually certify how sustainable the retail stores are, and uh, I found out that there are brands and luxury brands they are actually very sustainable in creating their retail stores, but they don't communicate about it. So that's something quite interesting, and it actually matches with, with the idea of luxury, that if you are luxury, you shouldn't be saying you are luxury, but you should demonstrate it, and people should look at you as luxury without even having a mention of luxury word in your website or any communication outlet. So we realized that there is uh, no sustainability reporting studies on the luxury industry, or the very few that are there, they focus on content and things. And we wanted to have another approach based on our competencies. So the research objectives, after my study on caring and ATWA and other study on, in 2016 about an extended literature review on sustainability, we realized that the current research landscape lacks a coherent uh, definition for sustainability. We don't know what it is exactly and which are the features that, should, that companies should comply to unless we look at more comprehensive regulations, even though sustainability is a voluntary practice, so it's not actually regulated. And how to report sustainability if there is any need to report it actually? So this study aims at identifying problems and opportunities for an effective implementation of sustainability reporting strategies. So it's not uh, our intent to assess sustainability, but looking at how it is communicated and exploring the communication of sustainability reporting strategies by luxury brands. In terms of literature review, after looking at the studies on sustainability, uh, we chose to look at the GRI, as kind of direction to look at our reports. So here I reported on the principles. I won't go uh, through this for um, constraints. And then, uh, since I'm a linguist, I looked at other types of studies on sustainability across sectors that actually look at communication practices from another background. So in linguistics, uh, there are studies on sustainability. There is a research center in uh, Università di Modena and uh, Reggio Emilia, where I got my master and studied CSR. And uh, there is this research group that is applying genre analysis, ecolinguistics, and looking at phenomenon of greenwashing, but also multimodal studies about the use of specific visual modes to enhance the meanings conveyed by, um, by the language. They apply a specific methodology like keywords and they look at phraseology in order to kind of look at prediction and commitment statements used to legitimize uh, the company past conduct or the future projection. After doing this literature review, uh, we came up with a multi framework and uh, we chose uh, as data LVMH reports and caring reports. It, was, uh, it wasn't our intent to compare the two conglomerates, but looking at them as a representative of luxury industry. Indeed, for LVMH, we have 205,000 words, corpus, while for caring, since um, PPR reports are not available, we only have 25,000 words. So we downloaded those documents. Uh, they are available in a PDF and we turned that into a TXT file in order to use a corpus tool that is able to generate quantitative results, and then we applied a mixed method of quantitative and qualitative analysis. The data analysis step include genre analysis, in which we look at the layout of those reports and the use of the visual images in those reports, also across time in order to identify specific shifts. Then we looked at the semantic fields that are able to identify not really things, but area in the semantics where people are concentrating their reporting strategies. And then we generated word frequency lists and concordances. Since I said that we are not comparing the two, cor the two corpora, we compared each of them to um, the business 
corpus from the BNC, the British National Corpus, that looks at language, English language, talking about business. So then we mapped out the different meanings considered in sustainability reporting, comparing these uh, two types of corpora. This is the software that we use, it's a uh, WMetrix. It has been created in 2003 in Lancaster University by Paul Rayson, and it's continually, continuously updated. And uh, it, the different 21 categories, semantic categories, have also been trained in uh, subcategories, as you can see here, for example, if I uh, take into consideration the semantic field of time, the software is able to identify whether the text is talking generally about time or is it past or present, because it might sound a little bit too detailed, but if we think about reporting, there should be something about the past. So the percentage of verbs used in past tense they sh it should be higher of those one in future tense that actually say projection. Otherwise, it's not going to be a reporting, but it's going to be just commitment to something new. And now I will go through the preliminary findings for each uh, stage. In terms of Jean, um, our data analysis uncovered that both groups, so DMH and CARI, have developed their own structure to report sustainability practices. So uh, what does it mean? It means that since there are no guidelines and direction, the way LDMH reports about sustainability is different from the way CARING is doing, even in terms of topics uh, talked about. For example, CARING has a session on the website about sustainability where it explains the methodology. So the different reports, they are just progressive reports towards a long-term uh, objective uh, fixed at 20, uh, 2025, if I remember correctly. That is also symptomatic of the reason why we find less words produced in order to report sustainability. While LBMH, it releases reports every year and they keep uh, reporting on that methodology over and over again. So it's like a full report every year. Across the data set, there is a common theme in those reports. So they both strive for transparency and completeness of information. Uh, one difference that we notice is that if caring um, strives for transparency in terms of setting a standard methodology that could be applied within the industry, LVMH is transparent in a way that it explains in which way they, um, they have an impact on the world through their production process, and they also explain in which way they are trying to solve the problem. So both of those examples are symptomatic of transparency. Uh, here I provide an example for LVMH in which for example, the reduction of energy consumption in the headquarters and retail space is deemed related to actual sustainability behaviors. So this is a transparent way of saying we are aware of the fact that we, there is an energy consumption within our business, but a way of solving the problem is, for example, trying to reduce in headquarters and retail stores. Once we finish the um, genre analysis and uh, the use of uh, visual analysis that I will be talking uh, in the next slide, we try to look at, okay, when LVMH and CARI report on sustainability, in which way they structure their reports. So we merged the way they uh, report on sustainability and we tried to come up trying to generalize with a structure that it would be useful to be followed in a generic way so that we could look at the two conglomerates but also give directions to other companies to have a kind of standard to report on sustainability. So it would be useful to have opening remarks, not only the um, CEO's letter or the chairman letter that is uh, already in the CSR reports, but looking at what type of people are behind the sustainability um, practices. And LVMH in recent reports has actually shown who are the people working in uh, sustainability, for example. Introduction, so explaining which direction and uh, repeating the pillars of sustainability that is there. Then reporting the activities that should be uh, the major content, because if it's a report, 
it should be about reporting what has already been done, contributions, so maybe linking up to the introduction, future commitment, and then in the appendix, the methodology that even if updated, it shouldn't occupy most of the report or maybe um, presented in a separate way. In terms of the use of visual resources, we looked at it also diachronically, and what we realized is that there is still an, a decor decorative element of visual resources. So for example, um, in, uh, in uh, 2002, 2003, uh, that's the case of the there were, for example, um, a consistent use of uh, green or some colors that were actually branding the report. After 2012, we can see that both conglomerates, they are shifting towards the use of tables and uh, figures in order to present uh, the results in a more objective way. Even though, uh, for both, we have realized that when uh, the report is about the brand level, there is still a kind of promotional tone that we assign to the fact that now those reports are available to everybody. Um, for time constraint, I'll just go quickly through my results. Uh, in terms of semantic fields, this is how we mapped out thanks to the corpus tools. And we looked at the higher score. I won't show the number, but basically the size of the words means that they are more frequent in the, in the report in comparison to the PNC. And then we looked at each concordance line. So we clicked on each semantic field and we looked at the way the words connected to that semantic field are used in order to convey meanings. So you can see some examples here. So the high, the one square scoring higher and what does it mean and which effect they are talking about. Um, here is an example of what I was mentioning before. So LVMH has a high score in cause and effect. So what we are causing, what is the effect, and in which way we are trying to solve. So that conveys the idea of transparency, for instance. Here are the results for um, Kerry. And as you can see, they more focus on um, logistics and raw materials. And I will have some examples later. So this is the same process. So we looked at what they are actually talking about and what what actually means. Uh, for caring, we picked an example of living creatures, animal, and birds because it seems to be uh, the topic that they are talking about more. In terms of concordances, so we looked at each word connected to each semantic field. And um, generally, we looked at semantic and lexical grammatical level. And the findings show that there is a use of scientific language because they want to um, talk about sustainable practices in a scientific way and objective way. Uh, for example, Karen talks about environmental PNL and um, it uses a clear methodology. Uh, in terms of words, this is not about semantics, but this is the actual words that are used more frequently in those reports. This is a DMH. So here, for example, you can also see that there is some self-pressed reference. There is the use of word maison, but then they talk about waste, products, consumption. So we pick, for example, energy, packaging, and practices in order to show examples. And but I have already talked about energy, so I'll go through this quickly. Uh, for caring, uh, these are the most frequent words. And as you can see, there is transportation, and they also talk about suppliers, for instance. And this is a topic that we are willing to explore because there is something interesting. Um, in recent reports, there is this idea that if we are sustainable, we, are sus we have sustainable practices, we also need to look at our suppliers and go back to the supply chain to make sure that whatever we use, uh, it complies to those norms that we have settled for us. But for example, in caring, there is an example that says that we are, uh, we are checking and monitoring our suppliers' uh, practices However, we only control the ones that are paid directly from carry. So using this type of sentence structure, it leaves room to the idea that, OK, then maybe this supplier may have other types of practices which are not sustainable, and you don't check just simply because the process is not directly uh, built to carry. So 
so there, there is a need of like revising the way that those reports are written, sometimes in a specific case. Overall findings, uh, both uh, conglomerates discursively construct sustainability as an embedded feature of luxury because of the rare material used to craft their company's product. At a group level, both organizations attempt to embed sustainable practices from pre-production, production, and distribution. At the brand level, the preliminary findings reveal a kind of romanticized vision of sustainability still. So we see Stella McCartney to be defined a vegetarian brand. But for example, Gucci, that belongs to the same conglomerate, will only commit in 2018 to be for free. So there is this um, idea of like, we are incorporating sustainability, is good for the brand, is a promotional tone, but it's not really uh, at the same level for all of them. From this discourse analysis, then we want to challenge the idea that can luxury really be sustainable? And more than that, uh, wouldn't it be better to have external auditors to, to assess sustainability instead of trying to uh, define the standards on their own? And again, communication has its benefits to engage the community and all the stakeholders within the industry that hasn't sustainability become a corporate PR element? And as we are aware, <coughs> there are types with very strong sustainable practices but without any communication about it. Isn't it more a suitable strategy for luxury brands to do good without advertising it? These are our contribution, theoretical and methodological. Uh, I will conclude with this. There are some takeaways for more of professionals. So first of all, talking about report, um, we need to think about genre and structure because if we define a text <coughs> as such, it should comply to some uh, rules. The use of visuals, uh, tables and figures, they do convey objectivity. Language, we need to be aware of, of our lexical choices and phraseology. Report and projection, so as I explained before, the use of specific tense, they suggest a specific attitude. In terms of methodology, uh, long-term projects, they seem to be more feasible. And sustainable standards, uh, the GRI is continuously updated, but maybe that's more for policymakers. We should have standardized practices and external factors. Uh, for future research, <coughs> like the time for this. So this is a selected references. And if you have any question, if not in the Q&A, you can just email me. Thank you. Thank you.